Hey, welcome back to Hustle and Flowchart. Today we've got a really exciting one. We're talking with Rich Robinson from Anamoka Brands. Mm. And uh, Rich is pretty high up over there at Anamoka. Why don't you uh, tell us, uh, tell the audience a little bit about who we're talking to, if I can get my words out. <laughs> if you can speak. Yeah, Rich Robinson is the, uh, the entrepreneur in residence at Anamoka Brands. And Essentially, uh, you'll, he'll tell the story. Yeah, so you're going to get to know Rich. I mean, the guy's got a crazy colorful background in terms of travel in the world, being being worlds with an S. So yeah, metaverse worlds as well. Yeah. as well. Um, but he's been in all these crazy industries. Um, yeah, backpacking, living under stairwells, stealing from buffets. But, uh, <laughs> you know, never been caught. Um, but you'll hear the stories of how basically all of these experiences have led him to China for the last 25 years. And he's originally from Boston, so he'll tell you the whole scoop. But the whole, this whole, you know, kind of sums up into where he's at now with Animoca and Web3 and all this blockchain gaming technology uh, just accelerating at a crazy pace. Uh, you know, and he's he's heading up a key position in Animoca, which he'll describe. And Animoca brands, just so you know who they are, a lot of the folks in the gaming space definitely know of Animoca. They're everywhere. It has investments in so many games. I think he said something like 200 uh, under their portfolio now, or that was last year. They invested in two more, he said, just yesterday or last week. So Animoca is one you want to follow as well, Animoca brands and the games that they're publishing. Yeah, Rich is infinitely interesting and uh i feel like we could have gone on for like three hours with him uh, yeah, and we talk about you know the types of things that animoca brands looks for in investing we talk about the state of play to earn games uh i mean it's a pretty wide-ranging conversation so we're not gonna blabble on we'll uh, we'll let you blah, listen to the conversation <laughs> blah 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 i can't even say the word blabble i don't even know if blabble is a word blabble. but uh, i'm not gonna blabble anymore uh but i am gonna remind you make sure that you are following us i am matt r wolf on twitter he is joe fear on twitter we have Hard fork gaming on twitter and also we got something really cool we're doing if you go to hardfork.gg slash whitelist we're going to be dropping some nfts we're building this thing called the hard fork gaming alpha club where we're going to be dropping alpha we're going to be dropping nfts uh just go to hardfork.gg slash airdrop and uh, you'll get all the details and we'll be hooking you up so be quick because we have something special for the first uh, one thousand, say a thousand. Yeah, so, so if you, you want to be in that OG. one thousand group Get yeah, in the first 1,000 are going to be OG. Hardfork.com. Nope. Hardfork.gg slash whitelist. Yes. That's how to get to, there. Let's go talk to Richard. All right. We're we're going. We have Rich Robinson from Animoca and like about 50 billion other industries and stuff before reaching Animoca brands. And uh, man, this is this is a conversation that, I, Matt, I've been talking with you about for a while because yeah. I, I chatted with Rich maybe a month ago. Uh, you know, he's under the weather then. And I was like, this guy's cool. He's got a lot of insights. He's, he's not just, you know, play to earn and the trendy games and all this stuff and Animoca brands that everyone kind of knows about now in this space. But, you know, I was starting to hear the picture of like, what is rich? What are these crazy stories? So, you know, now rich that we have you here, I'm going to bring in here is, um, I want to dive into these stories of the last, I think 25 years you've had in Asia and you're what in Bali right now, I believe. Right beautiful background i am on the island of the gods oh, indeed yes like for it. my stints <laughs> so i mean like you've you've landed in a good spot and and i just reading your background you know after we chatted the first time i was like all right you're interesting and then like read your bio and you sent it over and you linked in i mean like it reads like a novel or an adventure novel almost of like wow you've been all over the country or all over the world that is doing everything but it's accumulated now like fertilizer like you said <laughs> into where yes. you're at so just um, yeah. heaps and heaps of shit in which to grow the well. entrepreneurial <laughs> fauna. Yes. I mean, like, and, yeah. And you and I, I think our first chat, like we shared, like, we're just saying, talking about how crazy entrepreneurship is anyway, just mentally taxing. Like, you know, you brought your, up your oh. mental illness. If you're going to do it right. It's like, <laughs> who are these freaks that are going into this? Almost certain death. Like we started the thing, you know, the, our chat up this morning of like my, favorite line like the very first line from the matrix like your men are already dead <laughs> right it's like i got this idea oh, i got a team or i got product hey, your men are already dead the most likely outcome is you are going to fail mm. and it's going to be pretty you know miserable uh many points along the way 
But um, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, man. Well, well, I, I feel like too with, so with, true. with Web three and entrepreneurship specifically as well. It just adds all sorts of extra complexities that make it, you know, a little yes, bit less straightforward. Yes, it's an extra opportunity, <laughs> extra scale, extra speed, but it's a risk multiplier, right? Mm. So it can just wobble into oblivion even even faster, right? So, uh, but yeah, but hey, Joe, Matt. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, Selamat Pagi, as they say here in Indonesia, where I became a refugee during COVID mm -hmm. after 20, after a quarter of a century in China. So, yeah, you know, I grew up in the, uh, um, the, 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 you know, greater Boston, mm -hmm. and I took my wicked hash Boston <laughs> accent after drinking Cuddy Sock in the Park with an odd vodka and Maki Mak <laughs> out to California and uh, went to USC. And then they had an exchange program with Cambridge University. And my, my grandparents are from Ireland, Irish immigrants. You know, you can't spill a pint of Guinness without hitting a plastic patty like me in, in, in Boston. And uh, uh, so I have dual citizenship. So I was like, you know, connected to Europe. Um, and I did a backpacking trip around Europe. I'm 55 this year. So it was 88. And um, it was magical. You know, all of the fairy tales that we grew up in are all set in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. So it literally feels, feels magical. Um, and, you know, the whole backpacker mill when you're on a train and there's one cuisine this day and another language this day and another set of architecture is just intoxicating. And I met this Aussie guy who he was eating. I, I still remember this so well. He was eating pasta out of a, out of a pot that was like left behind by some people in a, uh, you know, with like a, with like a wooden spoon, <laughs> had these big old clumpy, clumpy boots. And he was like, and I, I was kind of proud of myself. I'd been on the road for four weeks and he's like me mate, I don't know, four, four and a half years. And I was like, that meme of that guy who's just like whose mind is blown oh, yeah. and like you know it's like fireworks and i was like i was like speechless <laughs> and uh he told me two things which um uh first was that he was totally broke so he was just working and traveling and he'd been doing that for almost a half decade and the second one was that he was really um uh, petrified of flying so he had done it all by boat or land oh, wow. yeah. and he said you know listen mate there's only there's a four trips in the world if you just think of a world as a silhouette north south america Europe, Asia, third is Africa, fourth is Australia. So there's really only like four swaths of land. Yeah. And he said, if you can just go overland on those four trips, and it really framed it to me. I was like, wow, there's hundreds of countries, but yeah, there really are only four major overland trips or a fifth if you're a psycho and want to go to Antarctica. But that's a that's another story, right? Hang but out with uh, the birds. Yeah. and uh, hang out, hang yes, and I um uh you know I, I actually have this one big hairy audacious goal. I've ran marathons on four continents. I've did Ooh. Rome, Sydney um uh beijing and new york and then i want to do one in africa south america and antarctica but i figure antarctica might be the easiest because you can run a bit and slide in your belly yeah, and run a bit and slide in your belly right so but uh, um thank Great you good night i'll be here all week do what the penguins um, do so yeah, <laughs> yeah man. but then he, he said something to me he's like mate you can see the world you can hear you can feel the world but you can smell it. You can mm. smell the world, mate. And I was like, oh, I want to smell the world too. <laughs> like that sounds amazing, right? So that like he like unscrewed the top of my skull and took a soldering iron into my medulla oblongata or whatever it was <laughs> part of my brain. And I was like, I'm doing that. So I spent <laughs> uh, four years do, do, do yes. There was no choice. I, I didn't have any. I was completely you know reprogrammed like I was in Westworld or something wow. like that, right? And uh, uh, do, do do I really have free? Uh, free will or not, because I didn't after that point. And uh, yeah, so I just was like, I made a deal with my parents and I'm just going to keep working until uh, and keep traveling until I can't. And then worst case scenario, what's the worst case scenario besides, you know, some horrific injuries, just like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm broke, I'm stuck, uh, you know, buy me a ticket back home. And I lick my wounds back in my, my ACDC posters yeah. and my, you know, you know, a track tape player from the eighties, you know, still, still in, in my room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, th 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 there are worse things. So, so I just, I was a bartender in the Virgin islands. I just showed up there. Um, St. Thomas got a job, brought down some buddies, it's a ski bum in Switzerland. I taught English in Prague after the revolution. I wow. lived in a fishing village in Norway. I picked grapes in France. I lived in this naked city in the south of France. It's called <laughs> Cup Dog, the world's largest nudist colony. A um, naked, a naked and, city, uh, wow. <laughs> naked city, 15,000 people, mini golf, driving, <laughs> oh, shopping, whatever. Oh, wow. uh, and uh, I was I was doing some work as a cook, and I met this American woman, and it was, you know, it was a... Uh, 
uh, interesting you know, side excursion. And then I did another ski season in Switzerland. And then I moved to Germany. I'm a little embarrassed to admit with the intention of becoming a Versuchskaniken of oh. Deutsch, which means a guinea pig. Oh. So there's all these pharmaceutical companies and these pharmaceutical companies uh, in, in, in Munich, they, they do human trials and you need, you know, you need the placebo group and you need the, you know, so there's, there's all this like backpacker mill of um, these like backpacking bums, mostly from like South Africa, you know, Kiwis, Aussies, yep. some, some Brits who are just, you know, some Canadians that I just kind of met over the years. And I remember they had this thing and they even, this is how this is dating me. They called it mimeographed. It was like a, it was like a two page like printout and it was called the backpackers, the, 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 the bums Bible. And it talked about how, how people could be like, kind of like a modern hobo, like, you know, going around Europe and go around the world. And like, like here's some of the tips. You're stuck in a city. You don't have any money. You're in Berlin. Uh-huh. Every button in an apartment building, click the door opens, the stairs, the elevator, go under the stairs. It's usually kind of dark, set up your one man tent, crash for the night. No go back out yeah. into society. Nobody, nobody's the wiser, right? Or there's maybe like a four-star hotel. You kind of just don't make eye contact. Go up to the third floor. Go into the ballroom. There's uh, you know tables with long tablecloths. Just go underneath. <laughs> Dude, go into the it. carpet and just it. just crash, right? And 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 maybe or maybe not like go into the handicap bathroom and just take a full shower and destroy the place. <laughs> just and then quick. do a drive-by on the buffet. <laughs> do a drive-by on the buffet and just go right the back door. And uh, <laughs> you know, I I I I, I, I like. You know, it was desperate times. This is 1992, right? It was it was a long time ago, and the statute of limitations is is, is passed, by the way. Yeah, sure. well right. passed. But, but, no one can use this but, for but, incriminating evidence. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Never convicted. Never yeah, convicted. Never. And uh, one of those one of those things was ta- it was explaining about how to. Oh, another one is you you're, you're hitchhiking. I did a lot of hitchhiking around back then, like. Yeah. You do some sob story to the driver to get in the city because that's the toughest part. You get dropped six Ooh, kilometers yeah. outside the city yeah. and there's no public transport and it's raining and it's dark and you have to walk for like, you, know, you just be like, yeah, my aunt. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to break <laughs> down here. My aunt is really sick and um, I just wanted to see her. I don't know if I'm going to make it before. <laughs> and just, I'll drop you off right there. Right. Yeah. So, the squeak. Wow, you're you're right, you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your, your aunt lives right downtown in a nice neighborhood. Yes, she does. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> See you later. Right? And then you run away. <laughs> Dark. Out. Yeah, run. So I don't know what the audience thought they were going to get out um, of this episode, but uh, they're learning how to. <laughs> they're learning well, how to travel. I, I, right I, I haven't. I haven't spoken. I haven't spoken about that in a long time. But anyway, I went to Munich to become to become that, uh, uh, you know, uh, guinea pig. And then I met the. I knew this American woman with a German boyfriend and. She's like, come over for dinner. And then the German family's like, no way. You're going to get this horrible injury. You're going to be stuck. Um, so you're going to come work for my husband. So I, I, I got a job as a, as a scaffolder. And then I worked at the BMW factory um, uh, after that. And then I took the train through Siberia, Mongolia, Beijing. I did that first overland trip. Yeah, yeah. I hitchhiked from Switzerland to Prague. And then it was an 11-day train ride from the Ukraine to Hong Kong. Wow, um, that'd be beautiful. And five and a half days th- through Mongolia, through Siberia. And that was 93. And, you know, the 80s, when I really sort of, you know, I graduated college, 89, Russia was going to destroy the world if Japan didn't take it over. Hmm. And 89 was, you know, a big seminal year, apartheid ends, the wall falls, but, you know, China took three steps backwards with, with Tiananmen. Yeah. So I had very low expectations of modern China. But as soon as I got there in 93, like Game of Thrones, dragon, just... <laughs> just uh, (laughs) dug her talons into me and then uh the dragon and i had two kids together and now we're divorced but we're still good friends but uh amicably so and uh but i but i knew that china is the biggest story of our lives right i mean i know china gets a lot of you know bad press these days and it's you know everything is much more you know nuanced and there's you know you have to really humanize chinese people who are amazing and the kind of insane um, you know, dynamism and scale and growth there. Uh, you know, I'm writing my first book. It's called At the Speed of China, mm. like at the speed of light. And mm-hmm. I'm actually launching my, my my podcast around that, which is coming out in the the next um, uh, next few weeks. Uh, and the thesis is four years outside of China is a year inside China. And that th- certainly wasn't the case 30 years ago when I got there, but it's uh, it's certainly the, the you know the case now. And uh, so I knew China was the place, and I traveled around Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand. 
I came to Bali. I was so mm. broke. I walked from the airport to Kuta Beach to save like, I don't even know, a buck or something, right? <laughs> and uh, um, and um, I just knew. I knew China was the place. And I got my MBA in the Netherlands. I wanted a European MBA. This was back in 94. So I went to uh, Erasmus University. And I, uh, that was when the, the predecessor of uh, Netscape it's called Mosaic. It was mm-hmm. created by Mark Andreessen, the founder of Andreessen Horowitz. You know, mm-hmm. so I did my first trip on the on the internet, and my, my mind was equally blown. So you know, I'm five years out of college now, and I just kind of followed. You know, I'm, I didn't really follow my passion, but I was just like, I want to explore. And then I found something that really spoke to me, really moved me, which was China and then the internet. So I was like, I'm going to put that together, like yeah. chocolate peanut butter. Get your peanut butter, my chocolate. You get your <laughs> internet in my China, right? Um, so. I remember telling my fellow classmates that in, in 94 and they were like, yeah, wow. That was, you know, I wasn't any, I'm not saying I was a visionary. It was just something that, you know, but it was like very, the internet didn't have a business model then. Right. There wasn't. Yeah. And it was, you know, there, there you know, China didn't, uh, you know, like I ended up going to China to be the internet guy in China, you know, two years later. And I forgot to check to see if the internet got there yet. Like there was like <laughs> there was no internet in China really. It was like it was dial up, yeah. and there were more people online in Hong Kong with six million population, yeah. a million people, on, and then all of the mainland. But um, but I just you know you could just smell that it was going to be something big. So so I graduated. I had no money, no job, broke as the Ten Commandments, <laughs> as my dad would say, and uh, I got a one way ticket to uh, to Africa. So I was like, what's the other swath of land that's kind of nuts? <laughs> And uh, that, you know, I got to do by land um, and I should do that when I'm in my 20s when, you know, Steve Martin has this great book called Born Standing Up and he's got a picture with Linda Ronstadt and he's like, look at us. Aren't we beautiful? And he goes, of course, we're beautiful. We're both in our 20s. Everybody's beautiful <laughs> in their 20s. Right. Like yeah. you can do anything. Right. So I, uh, I rode a bicycle through Africa. I spent um, it's, you know, from Nairobi to Cape Town, the equator to the southern tip wow. you know, in Africa because it's squeezed Mercator projection. It's squeezed, you know, in the middle of the map like Africa is gigantic, right? A billion people in Africa. And just from the, you know, the equator down to South Africa, that's the uh, distance of L.A. to Boston. Right. That's that's, wow. you know, 3000 miles. Yeah. So I did I did 4000 kilometers by by bike through seven different countries and you know, I, what did I, what did I want to do? I wanted to kind of test myself to kind of see my limits. Um, and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of like being an entrepreneur in a way where you're just like, this is going to be amazing and great. And then two weeks in, you're like, whose idea was this anyway? Oh, it was yours. You asshole. (laughs) And that is totally the point of the entrepreneur, man. (laughs) Everybody knows now. And now you can't, if you just kept your mouth shut and just started to ride a bicycle through Africa, you could have been like, I rode a thousand kilometers through Africa. People would have been like, wow, but you're like, shit, I have 4,000 to go. Right. (laughs) Um, so, but, but the other thing I really learned from there is that most of life is like, if this is like some sort of like, um, you know, a baseline, most of life, you're kind of blipping up and down, up and down. Oh, there's a high, high. There's a low, low. But when you're traveling, it's like boom, 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 boom. High, high, low, low. High, high, low, low. Like you know, in 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 a week, yeah. right? And yeah. same thing with entrepreneurship, where you're just like, I am pushed to the limits of my humanity. And then like, this is really gonna work. Oh, we're all gonna die. This is and that's like before lunch, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. And then you know, so it's so it's like, how how can you be an entrepreneur? I you know. I think there's I, I think there's two ways I tell some of my students I teach you know an entrepreneur course for whatever that's worth you know Frank Zappa said you know someone asked him about a bad review of his song and he's like I, I mean writing about music is like dancing about architecture right <laughs> and uh, so like, hey, like I love entrepreneur entrepreneurship class. I, think I, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I took one yeah. and that's my still my favorite teaching, professor but like I know your point is here. that right okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think 15 to 20 percent of it, you can really here's the fundamentals, right? Yeah. Ideation, you know, team building, product, you know, marketing, whatever. But then 80 percent of it is just jazz, and, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. mindsets. And yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, um, yeah, so I think, you know, if you can travel and travel in a way that's like I am very comfortable with discomfort, like I don't even know where I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm getting mm-hmm. stuck in a train station in Prague, right? Pro scene, pros, or like every 30 seconds, so I can, on the, you know, just like, what's going on, right? <laughs> Make a or you take yeah. a long, a, a hard, steep train to Western China for 48 hours, or you're, you're doing whatever, then you're like, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm actually okay. 
Like I just, I woke up and everything's fine. And that's why a lot of first generation or immigrants are such good entrepreneurs. Cause they're like, you don't know where the bar is for like mm. shittiness and difficulty. Right. True. You, you know where I grew up? Like, this is like, this is still like awesome. Right. It's like, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's okay. Right. You, they, and like the guy who started GoDaddy, he, um, I think his dad was in the Vietnam war and he, his, his, he was complaining to his dad and he was like, his dad's like, okay, um, are they going to kill you? And he's like, what? And he goes, are, are they going to murder you? Is there a gun? Does this head, happen? Sir? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, he goes, no. And then he goes, all right, just keep going then. And he was like, <laughs> wow, you're right. Like, <laughs> well, it's not, all about framing. I'm not right? going to get summarily executed. <laughs> so yeah, just keep going. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other way, of course, is to just start a company, right. Or, or, you know, maybe there's a third, which is to work inside a startup, but I think you really have to be like, Hey, I want to be you know, a board, a board observer, and I want to work, you know, triple the hours to basically, you know, see exactly what's going on and go in other meetings and just keep my mouth shut, right? Like, yeah. like, like that's, that's possible. Um, if you have the right kind of, you know, EQ, IQ to be able to like, you know, yeah, you know, sort of shadow somebody, right? Then, then you can kind of learn a lot that way. That's but then that's also, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it, it, but it's also tough too, because it's like, you know, you're, you're as strong as your weakest link in a startup. And it's like, all right, what are you, what are you actually doing then? Are you, you know, you're really putting all your effort to, you know, pull the sled or are you just, you know, trying to observe and, you know, jump ship eventually. Right. So, so I, I think, you know, there it's, it's, it's a little bit of a balance, but anyway, that, that bike trip to Africa really kind of gave me a lot of grit and resilience. And, you know, I, I ticked, I ticked off that second continent, you know, I, I still am going to do overland through Australia with my family mm -hmm. um, next year or the year after, since I'm so close. And then I, then I have to save North and South America, um, yeah. uh, as, as another trip, but, but I, I just, um, you know, I really love that trip, uh, through Africa, you know, because all of those, you know, I talk about the high highs and the low lows. It's kind of like Forrest Gump where all the bad stuff just goes away. Mm. Right. Mm. It just, and you just remember the peaks. And I think that's the beautiful part about entrepreneurship too, is like, you're just getting the edges, you know, the bird, like all smoothed off because you have to go down into the to the pain, you know, the pain the cave. And, and, yeah. You know, the, and you're seeing shit the, that the, most the, people the never gulch. see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indeed. You're seeing the edge of your own humanity. Right. Yeah. And like, and, and like, I think that's, too. that's the yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. And your co-founders. And like, that's why a lot of startups fail from suicide rather than murder because they yep. just, the co-founders can't get along because they're, it's 3 AM and like, Oh, you have, you know, 32% of the company and, you know, I only have 18 and like, you know, I'm working harder than you are and, you know, whatever. And like, mm -hmm. we're going to die and like, <laughs> mommy, make it stop. <laughs> Mama, I want to go home. Oh, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> like I literally felt that way. Like snot dripping from my nose. Like I want to yeah. just go home. <laughs> right? There's and, no uh, mommy here. Like, <laughs> it's all yeah, there is no mommy. You're not, you're not finished when you're well, tired. You're finished well, when you're done. If anyone right, is so, still yeah. with us, <laughs> then you are a true entrepreneur and I congratulate you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I just scared them. Um, Scares them all away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, but this is so damn valuable because I mean, it's real talk, you know, and, and I know we talked about that and like with web three, it's like this crazy time where there's just idea city, you know, I feel like there's probably more entrepreneurs in this space that have maybe not been entrepreneurs before, you know, either if it's in, mm. in investing or maybe yes. starting a game project. I mean, at Animoca, I'm mm. sure you're seeing some of this, but like just because Matt and I have been or people starting a guild. All yeah, the above, like, any you know, project really. Micro guilds, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, what's your perspective there? Because I feel like there's like a whole new wave of entrepreneurs landing into this Web three environment yeah. right now that are kind of figuring out in real time. Yeah, so you know, Yat, the founder of Animoca, he asked me to join um, as an advisor last year and red pilled me into you know the whole blockchain gaming world. Yeah. It was around the time. It was about a year ago when um, uh, Axie Infinity launched their Ronin sidechain. And I, I think for my money, that's the before and after for Web3. It wasn't like necessarily Crypto Kitties or Punks or, you know, NBA Top Shots. Like that Ronin sidechain enabled people to break it in a way by, by adding scholars. And then that kind of, you know, that, that, that created, you know. And, and the one thing that he, you know, you know, after I got to China, I've done in the 24 years, I did eight startups, three as an exec in private companies and then five as a hmm. founder. And I exited three to publicly listed companies. And I've been involved with 50 others as an angel or board member, or, you know, advisor and hundreds of others as a mentor. And, you know, and I teach it um, entrepreneurship at, at university. So, you know, I've known Yat 25 years and 
um, he said, hey, what, what are you working on right now? And I said, you know, I'm a pandemic refugee in Bali and you know, I'm writing this book and I'm doing a lot of CEO whispering. There's a lot of companies that kind of got buoyed up by COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, can you, can, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to have you, you know, as an advisor. And I was like, you know, I'm honored. That's great. And he's like, you know, you've been through the web one cycle, which was just about, you know, reading the internet and then web two, which is read and write. And then also the smartphone revolution, you know, all those apps. Mm -hmm. And then also set against China, which has this in, insane, you know, sort of um, trajectory and growth, right? I mean, 70% mm -hmm. of China was in, in poverty and now it's like zero, right? Wow. And, you know, the most billionaires in the world, it's not New York, not London, not Singapore, not Tokyo, it's China, it's Beijing, yeah. right? Because of mm -hmm. internet, you know, the most valuable internet startup in the world, TikTok is in Beijing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Beijing is the Silicon Valley, not just of China, but of Asia. And it's the only ecosystem that can rival Silicon Valley. And in some ways it, it exceeds Silicon Valley in terms of, you know, the, 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 the price of a rounds and the, you know, um, the number of, uh, uh, you know, um, users that, that sites have. So it was like, you know, let's take some of those scabs and calluses and scar tissue that I've accumulated like armor. And then like, let's help, you know, some of the other team members go into battle. And the, 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 uh, the agreement was 10 hours a month minimum. And I was like, I'm all in. And then I was doing 10 hours a week and then 10 hours a day. And then after a few months, we checked in and he's like, how's it going? I'm like, it's like, it's web one, it's web two, it's smartphone, it's China, all compressed into a giant, you know, elastic band ball. And then you expand that three times. Like that's web three. And I was like, I quit, I quit. I don't want to be an advisor anymore. Come I on, will Rich. put me in coach. Give me, give me a Jersey. Give me a Jersey. I want to go in the game. So uh, he asked me to be entrepreneur in residence. So now I'm on the investment committee and I run an accelerator around guilds and, you know, I work on some special projects. So I'm in, I'm like, I haven't had a job for, you know, 20 years or so. And like, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm loving it and I'm seeing uh, so much deal flow and the speed of evolution and the, you know, incredible sort of opportunities in the space are, are, are blowing my mind um, every day. What are, what are some that just come top of mind right now? Like this, because I told you who the audience is here and I feel like we're, so our mission, mm -hmm. when we pivoted a lot of our talk and now all of our attention into this space, it was to be the bridge, is to show show what Web2 you know, skills and, and folks who are really savvy mm -hmm. over there, maybe the entrepreneurship, marketing and business can transfer over here or investing even. Mm -hmm. Like what are some mind blowing things right now that you've seen and maybe some ways that you're like, hey, this is a good way to at least start your journey over here as an entrepreneur? Sure. Well, I mean, if you look, like I said, the Ronin side chain, you know, Sky Mavis in Vietnam started Axie Infinity and we were, we raised the first round for them. It was 800K back in 2019 and it took six months. It was painful. Nobody wanted to invest. And as I understand it, over the two year period until they launched the Ronin side chain, they did a million in revs hmm. um, over those two periods, right? you know, wow. so 40 grand a month or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then one week a year ago in April, they did a million in a week. And then by December of last of last year, they were doing a million dollars every 40 minutes. <laughs> um, and so they did, you know, almost 3 billion um, wow. in revenue last year. Right. And of course, you know, uh, it's 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 overheated. And then they've since, you know, had their exploit um, mm -hmm. as well, too. But, you know, I think it because I've been through these waves before, because I've been through these cycles and people are like, um, you know, Yahoo, what a what a bullshit you know, company, you know, I mean, I mean, Yahoo was, was eventually worth, you know, tens of billions of dollars. Of course, it, it, sh it shut down now. But back then they were like, they have, they have no, no business model, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, at all. Right. Facebook bullshit, even, even uh, Amazon people, are, after they were public, people are like Jeff Bezos is kind of like a geeky joke. Right. <laughs> and then like, let's, let's look at like some of these, you know, I mean, Uber, you know, is, you know, when it started, people looked at that and were just like, that's a, a, a you know, kind of like, mino, you know, limos for the one percenter. And like, you know, it's, it's easy to just look at things kind of through a toilet paper roll and just see uh -huh. that that one sort of snapshot there. Right. And, you, 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 you know, I think what Axie Infinity has shown is how <clears throat> how um, uh, broad and interesting the entire potential market for this for this is. Right. And and, and you know, and broadly, like what we, our mission at Animoca is to, uh, you know, create the open metaverse and to um, allow people to have digital assets uh, that they that they yield, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that Yat and I talked, and 
you know, please listen to some podcasts um, for the, you know, for your listeners out there with, with Yat. Like one is from Real Vision, talks about NFTs as a store of culture. I mean, he's become like a real thought leader and guru, but, you know, he talked about these fiefdoms. Like think about, you know, hundreds of years ago when you were a serf, S-E-R-F, and mm -hmm. you're working in the fields and you have a lord and he has an army that protects you. But like, you know, I have 500 kilos of sweet potatoes. Um, oh, you may keep 50. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for not, you know, killing my family and thank you for protecting us, right? <laughs> and that's the sort of deal that we have, right? You know, and, and, and those people, it's unimaginable in this sort of, you know, capitalist, you know, democracies that we live in. Like, oh, are you a lord? Because you have all your teeth and you have out of season fruit and you yep. can fly? You can watch a $300 million production on this magical screen? Like, like, how did this all come about? And it's like, well, because we gave people property rights and we created, you know, you know, you know, specialization in the economy and we, we, we funded people and like, you know, we, we, we allowed, you know, you can see it in China too, when they, when they opened up Shenzhen special economic zone and they allowed, you know, uh, uh, people to unlock that entrepreneurial capabilities, right? It's uh -huh. kind of like a microcosm of what's happened in, in China as well too, right? So I think, um, you know, the, the, the fiefdoms of, you know, Facebook and Google, you know, Lord Zuckerberg and the, you know, <laughs> yep. the, the king, the kingdom of Google and the you know, Activision gardens, Blizzard basically. or, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, all, all, all of these platforms and walled gardens, right? I mean, like we're we're literally, you know, Rio. Like we don't even know we're in bondage, right? But we're, you know, and 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 it's like people are really, really resisting. I think what's happening, um, and I think in general, a lot of gamers are like, yeah, you know, they resist anything if there's any change, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I've I'm seeing some stuff now with AAA games where it is just. Like, Do you oh, think it's wow. going to get the gamers like, to actually? convert over or at least like be a little no open. question no okay, question good. thank god no no <laughs> question at all like, 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 like here, here's an example of just you know tip of the spear like we bought a company called blowfish studios and they're mm -hmm. they're dropping probably the first triple a game in uh uh in q3 it's called yeah. phantom galaxies mm -hmm. and the way that they've done it i don't know if you ever had ben on here um no. but you, you probably should he's this he's a founder and ceo awesome. so they they um you know a, a problem with a lot of um blockchain games is let's sell some nfts and then you get a whole bunch of whales and then you get a whole bunch of bots and then all of the you know community is like um hello mm -hmm. can we come in right and just yeah. like no it's like it's all taken over you know by you know forces outside your control so what they did is that they did um uh really interesting they, they gave all the nfts away for free they gave a half million of them away for free but to be able to whitelist you had to play this mini game they have four little mini games. It's kind of like a captcha in a way. It shows that you're yep. really, you know, human. And um, it also gets people excited about the game. So 500,000 entities out there. And then there's a secondary market. Um, and they take 10% of the sale. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're generating 150 ETH in, you know, in commission, right? So so the wow. company's got a half, you know, half million US in revs or so, right? Which is And then you burn rare. five of those. Yeah. yeah Which is, yeah, it's it's like how could you you could you couldn't even raise 500k to, to you start actually a game, have revenue, right? <laughs> like, and, what? Yeah, and and, and and you'd have to spend a, a you know half million or more in marketing to get people excited, right? Yep. So it's like upside down crazy town. Like I'm writing a blog post in the next few weeks about my epic year of unlearning about mm -hmm. how I had to unlearn a bunch of stuff, right? So you know you have to look at things like literally upside down, inside out, mm -hmm. from a different angle. So okay, giving it everything away for free. But we're going to make way more money than we normally would anyway. And we're creating this community. There's 100,000 strong in the Discord. And then you burn five of the NFTs. And then you get an even more special, you know, mm -hmm. NFT uh, as well, too. So then that creates, you know, even more scarcity and excitement around that. So, mm -hmm. so like, like those kind of mechanisms, like we're doing a lot of experimentation around that. And it's super, it's super exciting. Uh, I, I think, yeah. and then mm -hmm. there's there's another another game that's going to be launching soon. It's console, PC, um, full AAA, and like it's uh, it's from a team um, that um, made this game called Warhammer, and they're like I'm super excited about that. But I'm also super excited about you know uh, dozens and dozens and uh, dozens of other mobile games and you know games that are sort of a blend of um, you know PC and mobile. Mm. And then I'm also really excited about taking some of those learnings about how quickly that's morphing and then taking it into other areas that are not games. Like as an example, 
there's a company called Goki, G-O-Q-I-I, and the founder of that company is, is in India, and he's a, he's a game guy. He's, he's probably like the OG mobile game guy in India. Vishal Gondal started a company called India Games, sold it to Disney for $100 million, um, and found out at the end of his entrepreneurial journey that a lot of people find out is like, my health is really compromised. Mm-hmm. Like I really, I compromised my, my you know, self-care for care of the company. Yep. So he started a healthcare company. And, you know, he had a thesis around doing wearables, Fitbit, but then it morphed into something where, you know, a lot of preventative health is really, um, you know, um, very much needed. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, there's incentives and alignment, like insurance companies will pay for that. Companies will pay for that. Companies will pay you to be healthier. Mm -hmm. Like why, why not? Right. They should keep your brain Um, straight and and mental health too. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And keep you in the chair and like, you know, reduce churn and everything, everything else. Right. But how could they before? Right. They they couldn't really. So he's created this company that's very, you know, very successful. And we we led the A round and now we're helping them to tokenize all of their companies. So I think, I think tokenization like is like, that's, that's a fascinating, like I geek out on white papers and yeah. how things can be tokenized. And like, I think a lot of crypto will just go into the background, like credit swaps or derivatives, like they'll be important, but they're not going to be like, you're not going to be really even, most people are not going to be, you know, uh, you know, that savvy about like it. Just like most people really... aren't savvy about financial instruments. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like there but, needs to be uh, a better gonna, UI to yeah. the whole blockchain thing. And the and the and the and the UI is not like NFTs are powerful, but it's like it's you know it's not it's the fungible tokens that you know because it's fungible there needs to be these these you know coins and tokens mm-hmm. that are just completely you know liquid and that people get that oh I get mm-hmm. poker chips or I get mm-hmm. monopoly money or I get loyalty ownership. points or frequent Assets. flyer points yeah. yeah ownership ownership but then it's completely you know interoperable and fluid but you know eventually mm-hmm. right and I think yeah. that kind of lubrication like that's that's the promise of web three right it's not necessarily about having you know um you know a a, a monkey JPEG right which which I think you know I think there, there's going to be value created around, you know, some PFP projects. I, right. you know, it, it just will, um, and it's already happening with, with Board Ape, and we're we're deep in that, and and it's very much a work in progress. But you know, I'm really excited about tokenization, and we have a half dozen other projects of things that are not that are not games that are being tokenized that, mm. that really really make me make my pink parts tingle <laughs> let's say right, so. <laughs> dude oh my god I, I need to learn more about this yeah this you is, need to learn more about that. the pink parts not those no, parts no, okay yeah. <laughs> good on that I'll, I'll take a pass no, I, i'm curious but, uh, i'm not sure how, I'm uh, not join sure how... join us join us at uh, only fans for uh, the next podcast i'm gonna make the account now okay i'll get around <laughs> go for it yeah no I'm, I'm curious if you could share I, i'm not sure how much you can share but what what does animoca look for in in the the companies that they do invest in like you know the game companies obviously animoca is invested in some guilds um i believe animoca is involved in in board ape in some way in some way or they have some investment yep. in it or something um like we're, how do we're making how a board ape game and to... yeah, yeah. cool yeah, yeah what can you talk about here yeah yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean yats on the board of you know um you know it, you know the foundation around ape coin right so mm-hmm. i mean like we're we're, we're, right. we're deep we're deep um in, into that um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really fascinating for me because, you know, it's been how long now, like, you know, it, it's been like, you know, 10 months or so, but less than a year. And, you know, in, in the, in the, you know, the early days, way back nine months ago, <laughs> like I, I would, I would, ha- I would, I would have a call because it was still, it was still so, um, kind of inside baseball in a way, like if you knew about you know, SLP and Ronin sidechain, Mm -hmm. then you are probably already kind of crypto native, right? So, hey, somebody wants to start a game. Can you talk to them? Great. I'll talk to them, right? And they connect me on Telegram, you know, Telegram address. And then I show up to the call and like, you know, like I said, I'm I'm 55. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a notch below that, um, those two old guys in the balcony of the Muppets, right? In a way, right? Like (laughs) get off my lawn kids, right? But I, but I, but I, but I really, I really try to be like, you know, exercise every day and my wife's 15 years younger and I have a six-year-old daughter and my second current and final wife. And I'm running <laughs> after them while I'm fleeing the, the grim reaper. Right. So I, you know, and I, I try to be radically, right, <laughs> radically, o- yeah. Yeah, yeah. radically open-minded, yep. but I also like, kind of like, I kind of like been through a bunch of, you know, cycles before. Right. 
so I, so I show up to this call and somebody's there and they're like, you know, it's an avatar and they just have their, you know, uh, you know, their telegram name as, as the, you know, as their name with like the symbol for boron and totally you know, whatever, some sort of umlaut, whatever. Yeah. yeah and, and then I was just like, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Rich Robinson, uh, you know, entrepreneur residence. And like, and he's like, Hey bro. Um, so, uh, <laughs> list five Twitter names. And he's like, yeah, um, you know, we don't have any allocation left, but we'll give you a, a you know, we'll save a million for you guys. Cause I think it's good. And like, you know, let me know you have 12 hours to come in or not. Right. And I was like, Hmm. hmm. That's, a, that's an interesting pitch. Yeah. Um, what's your name? And he's like, like my real name? And I was like, yeah, shocker. Yeah, your real name, right? And he's like, oh, we can do KYC after. And I was like, what? after what? After we make a, yeah, after I give you a, a million into your wallet address? Like, I was like, we, like, like I like like that's that, that you know and like that, that wasn't the only one that that ever happened right so I'm just like oh yeah mm, breathe usa yep. usa right I'm just like I'm I you know I'm sorry we have fiduciary responsibility we can't you know invest in you know uh, anonymous projects right and like mm-hmm. and he's like okay you you can dox me but go this and then it turns out turns out the fact is that like you know back then it's like I you know I had a a small bag of crypto and now I got a big bag of crypto and now I'm gonna make a game and it's mm-hmm. like. Yeah, no, 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 you're not right. It's like, <laughs> you, like you, you, you could, you, you could accidentally make a company. I think I've seen some people that are like, you know, like the entrepreneur, like uh, equivalent is like, look at that brave, incredible, you know, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, insanely competent entrepreneur flying a dragon across the sky, <laughs> sitting on the back of the dragon, right? Woohoo! But then the, if you go up and zoom on the entrepreneur, they're like, I'm on a dragon. How the hell did this happen? <laughs> How ah, did I build this? Why did I buy off. this? Yeah. Don't, yes, don't bite me. Don't burn me. Don't throw me off, right? But from a distance, it looks like, oh my God, it's amazing, right? And, and like that can happen, right? Where you're just like, I thought I was sitting on a rock and now I'm in the stratosphere, right? But with a game, it's like, if you haven't been through like dev hell, live ops optimization, and like you know made a whole bunch of mistakes, like it's it's so rare that you could like, you know maybe you could get something, or or maybe in the very early days you could be like I got a bunch of money, and then you get a bunch of people who are like you red pill them, mm-hmm. who have a lot of gaming experience, but 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 you but you know you really need the leadership to like I believe to like really understand what's going on. Yeah. There's my little six-year-old. My little, little girl. <laughs> How are you doing? Yes. I'll, be, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. One, one sec. Sorry, little girl. And uh, okay. yeah, and 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 so 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 now we're seeing a lot of really really kick-ass Web two companies, um, you know, gaming companies who have a lot of experience, who are like really thoughtful about the game economy. And like I've I spent you know I red pilled myself into Eve Online. You know, like that company is 20 years old mm-hmm. and they hired a full-time PhD economist in 2008. And, you know, there's a, a really fascinating graph that shows, you know, all of the different um, sort of line items of the, you know, you know, stinks and faucets in their economy. Yeah. And you can see the top four or five, you know, that that's the, the sinks, you know, are way, way out here. And then the faucet is way in here and then everything else in the middle, it all kind of balances. Right. Mm. And like an in-game economy before it was it was kind of simple because you didn't have any you know any leakage you know for the most part there were some um, secondary markets where people were grinding for you know World of Warcraft you know you know famously mm-hmm. for you know for gold and mm-hmm. um, but but now like running an economy even if you're like a country <laughs> like how well does that go I mean Ray Ray Dalio his book principles is amazing right but he like I, I really really highly recommend Ray Dalio's book but also his 30-minute mm-hmm. video and he also oh, has brilliant. this great personality test called principles you yeah why you but he's he's a really world-class economist as well too in his thinking and he talks about the boom and bust cycle and how economies work and you know there's great videos and I make my students look at that and it's just like you know it's kind of like entrepreneurship where you just have like these cycles of like, all right, I'm, I have this thesis, uh, I've failed, I'm learning from it, I'm going to go here, right? Yep. And like these boom and bust, like everybody's just making it up anyway <laughs> with the most brilliant people and almost like unlimited resources. Let's just print more money. Let's, That's you it. know, raise yeah. interest rates. Let's pull these levers, right? And and even with that, it's like, oh my God, like, uh, you know, the iceberg, right? Yeah. Oh shit, right? And like, yeah. uh, too, you know what I mean? Or it's too so late, it's like, yeah. So, like, so the, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that so that stuff's all going to get worked out, and it's um it's going to take a little while, um but uh 
I'm I'm really excited. Like if you look at like you know iPhone launch in 07, and then you know like some of these you know League of Legends or whatever, it, it took mm-hmm. a few years for companies to figure out like okay, it's not you know like on Facebook, it's not Farmville like mm-hmm. that addictive kind of you know yeah. you know game loop like that can work, but it's kind of a race to the bottom, right? Like let's yeah. let's find the right game mechanics. And now there are so many games that are free to play and historically people like free to play that's bullshit (laughs) right like every time there's a new thing like in-app purchase free to play like ridiculous dumb failed yeah you're gonna get me somehow and like there are multiple 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 billion dollar you know franchises around that Mm -hmm. and many hundred millions and many many others as well too right it's like a model it's a it's a very big model right yeah it's 180 billion a year for gaming right and you know 90 billion of that is 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 mobile and you know 40 billion of that is in-app purchases right so just taking some of that iap and switching it to nfts you know that's a that's a common thing to do, right? Because you're just like, oh, we have the yellow pages. Let's make the yellow pages.com, right? Yep. And it's like, mm, okay, it's really going to be like Yelp or <laughs> something, you know, it's not going to really be called the yellow pages, right? Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, let's a create a taxi thing. service. And it's like, yeah, it'll be a whole new thing that we can't necessarily wrap our heads around. Yeah. But I think there has to, like, even like, I love Marx Brothers movies, right? And if you mm-hmm. look at their original movies, yeah. they were like, they were stage performances because they, performed on vaudeville so it was basically two cameras and they were kind of like on a on a set that was like a stage right Mm -hmm. and then they're like oh wait a second we can move the camera around we can do other stuff right just like (laughs) early television was like radio right and like that kind of you know that that's that that's something that's a kind of like necessary even like early you know cars looked like kind of coaches they did. in a way behind a horse right yeah. so so it's like you know that's that, that, that that's sort of this we're in that stage right now where we're like okay i get this and let's just put this there but then wow there's so many new things that we can't even yeah. necessarily you know foresee and that's the beauty of this space like we had justin khan on here you know he did twitch and he recently got funded terrific for... we just invested in fractal did you <laughs> yeah, i was good. gonna say he raised yeah. 35 million and, for and, fractal so. yeah <laughs> yeah and his, his co-founder robin robin chan is a really yeah. good buddy of mine he's an amazing they're uh, good guys angel and entrepreneur yeah yeah we were, was, was we're robin on as well too uh, we haven't had him, but it, we're, we chat with them oh. pretty often. Uh, that, yeah, we're synced up with them on some of their games, you know, that have come through Meta Rizek. Ops, Psyker. Yeah, they're just like, it's a cool platform. Mm. It's, I love the model there, but yeah. something he said on the podcast is, you know, Justin, he was like, this space, it, it's like, he, he sees this much bigger than anything he's ever done, you know, and, and Web3 specifically in gaming, which is like, how many ideas there are. And it's like, there's iterations across the board anybody can do. And like, if you have an idea team, like, it's just... We don't know what's going to come, but yeah, there's a lot of support from funding, from collaborations. I mean, it's just a cool space to be in right now that who knows what's going to come up. You know, these services that will be taken from maybe Web 2, but I think it's Chris Dixon. He's like, you know, skew morphism. You know, you want to not just bring... Skew morphism. Of course, of course, of course. That word. Here, 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 here <laughs> I am, mansplating skew morphism without even saying it. But uh, credit, you guys uh, Chris are already Dixon, like... Though. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. He taught yes, me that of word. Of course, of course, yeah. I, I, I'm... I, I sort of understood the concept, but I'd never had a word for it. So there you go. that's, a, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, it is, man. But yeah, very cool. Know. Well, I, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, we got to get you out of here in a minute right. or two. So I'm curious, what, what do you, what's in store for Animoca Brands? Where you know, is there anything exciting that you could share with the audience? Um, you know, any, any, any final words that that we can share before wrapping up here? Mm. Yeah. So you know, as I um, may have mentioned, you know, we have two hundred. Uh, companies that we've invested in. Um, we've made a lot of acquisitions in the um, you know, game development um, space. We've acquired two game companies, you know, just last week. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, we're, we're, we're an operator at our core. Uh, we, you know, the, the, the DNA of the company is mobile game company. And then, you know, 2018, we switched to uh, on-chain. And so we love to, um, you know, uh, create and operate and experiment. So we're really, uh, you know, at our core, not a you know transactional you know venture capitalist. We we want to add a lot more value to companies and help them. You know maybe maybe you're a, you know a game developer, but you don't necessarily have strong you know on chain experience, right? And we mm-hmm. can help to the technical side, the product side, the marketing side. You know oftentimes companies will come to us and you know maybe maybe they have it down, but they want to issue a token, and we have like you know token advisory services. We've, we've done you know um, dozens and dozens and probably over 100 different you know token issuances so we can can help with that 
Um, and uh, you know, we're we're looking to you know rapidly accelerate this open metaverse because we believe that you know the biggest sort of threat is maybe some of these established players start to create more walled gardens you know in the space and it, mm. it should be you know we we just want to have a you know a small um, you know uh, participation in you know you know hundreds and hundreds of of different companies you know eventually eventually thousands mm. so that we can you know help to help to grow. Uh, the whole the whole ecosystem, and uh, I think it's a it's a pretty terrific mission. And yeah, I mean, one one thing that I'm you know a last note is that I'm I'm really excited about is you know, I have a guild that I'm running on on the side here in Indonesia, and just you know if you're not in the developing world, uh, then it's it, it's it's really impactful when you're here to see how you can do well but do good. So, you know, yeah. a buck an hour, like, you know, the, the, the GDP per capita in the U.S. is, you know, almost, like it's approaching 60,000 U.S. Here in Indonesia, it's 4,500, right? And it's a little bit, um, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, skewed a little bit heavier to a, um, you know, a, um, so, so probably the average person makes, you know, uh, 70, 70 bucks a week, 60, 70 bucks a week, right? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, maybe below, below that even, right? Um, so if you're making a buck an hour, 40 bucks a week, then that's a, that's a needle mover. Like that's a, you, you can either highly supplement your income or you're replacing your job completely. Yeah. Yeah. And that for me is super exciting. That kind of mission, like at this age and stage of kind of the cycles that I've been through for me to get out of bed, I want to work with people that I just would hang out with anyway. Mm. And that's, you know, Yatsio and the rest of the, the team at Animoca. Like I just cultural fit and you know who those you know who those people are just amazing and, and the mission and vision but then also like what i can do to affect change and you know the, the back of the envelope thinking that i have is that um you know 7.6 billion people in the world let's just take you know 15 percent of that a billion people um so maybe in the developing world you're pulling the sled for probably five other people um in your mm -hmm. you know in your um uh in your family, right? Um, so let's say it's 165 million people earning money. They can they can you know move the needle for a billion people, mm. and they're making about a buck an hour for about 20 or 30 hours a week on average. And there's some people that'll make two bucks an hour for 50 hours a week, and but you know let's just say it's 25 hours a week for you know it's 100 bucks a month, right? That mm. you know would would be Jeez. would be coming in from yielding digital assets, managing digital assets, and you know that could be you know, doing something around play to earn where it becomes more sustainable, um, where you're helping, like, like, for instance, like, you know, if you have like a horse in real life, and then like, you know, you put it in a stable, and then people, you know, groom it and feed it and, you know, mm. walk it around and take care of the health. And then you ride the hell out of that horse in the weekend, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's HP. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's leveled up, you know, <laughs> uh, and then you're just like, woohoo, right. Yeah. And I, I think there's, you know, there, there, there's a lot of like, value exchanges. I think web three is not so difficult to really crack because it's, it's kind of like web two is really weird and warped in that, you know, everything's free, you know, the internet's a giant copy machine. And like, you know, there's a few companies that just kind of dominate everything. And I give all of my most valuable resources, my time and data to them for yeah. pretty much nothing. And, you know, so in web three, it's like, okay, things are a little bit more aligned with how things work in the real world when you have assets and they yield and then people work to help you yield those assets and i think there's going to be hundreds of millions of jobs in the um in the web3 space where people are uh yielding digital assets you know it could be in games could be in metaverses could be supporting those other people and like that's that's something that i'm really driven to to grow oh, that's cool and we we recently had uh, Peter from Blockchain Space on, and uh, he's oh yes, we're, Peter we're, Ing, he's terrific. Yeah, we're par partnered with him. At he's an investor now too. Yeah, he's uh, one of our sponsors. So <laughs> yeah, got to give him a shout out. But it, his the fact that he's over in the Philippines and you know he's like the master of all the guilds basically. <laughs> you know, um, that's his mission. He really is. He, yeah, he knows. And, he knows inside and out. And he painted that he vision. Has so much data of, from that space. Yeah, and how like just the fact that you can have like there's a whole economic, um, you know, a banking side or a finance side. Like now, folks that never mm -hmm. maybe had access to banks or loans can do that through their earnings mm -hmm. and these play to earn games, mm -hmm. leveraging a guild, maybe some of this technology that's being developed and tracking, you know, earnings and giving that trust to a financial. People can own. Yeah, people can start to own right because that's the thing is that when you're at the bottom of the food chain. 
like the ability to be able to get a loan at a rate that makes any sense, yeah. like it's kind of hopeless. Mm -hmm. Like like you're really really suppressed in a way. Uh, I was just like shocked even here in Indo to see oh if somebody wants to open up a cafe like the kind of gray market loans that they mm -hmm. would have to take and the terms are just ridiculous, right? Yeah, so it's like it's kind of almost impossible. But this opens up an entirely new mm -hmm. world for people and it's it's pretty it's pretty exciting and like you know and then you know if i may like you know i'm uh like i also believe you know 18 years ago 2004 was was kind of a cute time it was pre web 2 it was pre youtube pre iphone whatever and mm. but it was pretty similar like i can go back to 2004 and like but i think 18 years from now 2040 it's it's like mm. it's really different like i think 2030 is going to be kind of different 2040 we're, we're, we're really yeah. different <laughs> like like it's like seismic societal shift because i see right now i see the cracks already walmart's going to pay 100 120 grand a year for their employees to go and train to be truck drivers right mm -hmm. what if you then can like have an ai you know you know uh you know service to basically yeah. you know basically yeah and it's like and that costs 40 grand a year you and then it's you know already and, on it you know yeah, yeah and then and then and then it's also it's also you know uh, uh, accident rates and you know the mm -hmm. kind of like yield you can just drive you can you know trucks will be like planes where it's like planes are like you got to fill them up you got to keep them in the air right yeah. same thing keep with trucks going. you got to fill them up you got to keep them on the road right yeah. mm -hmm. and it's like it's like you know like you know that's one thing and it's not even just you know necessarily truck drivers or baristas or cooks or waiters you know or but it's like, you know, legal assistance as well, too. Right? Like, yeah. like I, I think AI superpowers, it's a book by Kai-Fu Lee. Um, I've gotten to know him. He's in Beijing. He's a really amazing, amazing visionary. And he also has AI 2041, his vision of the future in 20 years, what AI is going to look like. Like Ooh. that, that is all happening in China at an accelerated pace. Ooh. Like U.S. is the lab, but China is the in the wild the the actual it's like yeah. extract extract the dna from the mosquito in the amber make a make a mm. um <laughs> dinosaur a dinosaur <laughs> yeah, yeah but they're... like jurassic island <laughs> where they're like oh all the dinosaurs are dead it's like evolution is happening and especially accelerated by covid especially accelerated by you know what's happening in the industry there and china's even more closed off and difficult to see and like you right. know, it's like that kind of rapid acceleration around AI and automation that is going to come hard this this uh, you know decade, yeah. and then by 2040, it's going to be like it will be, you know, like I'm preparing my children, my sons. It's like you know, like it's all bets are off. It's a it's a really radically different world, and I I will I will really 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 stand by that. And you know, I think Web three is going to be that as well too. And like mm -hmm. it's um. Yeah. Well, you, what a time to be alive. Yeah, it's fun, man. Well, I want to give a shout out to your Speed of China book and podcast coming out soon because it seems kind of relevant Terrific. to what you're saying. <laughs> indeed, so, indeed. Yeah, you got is there, is there a website up for that or anything yet or is that still There down? there there will be uh in you know, yeah, I'm going to try to get it by May 1st. <laughs> so that's actually my on my to-do list for today. Cool. Yeah, do that. Let me let me know when that's live. But also, like I remember Ray Dalio saying the latest big forty-five minute animation or whatever it was. I definitely recommend everyone to watch it. Where it's like the changing of superpowers. Mm. That animation. New world order, yeah. World order, yeah. And it yeah. talked about China. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, all it's exactly what you're saying. And and it's pretty obvious to see when you're on the inside of some of these, you know, Web three calls with developers, investors, and kind of the vision for things. And yeah, we're exactly where you're saying we are. And. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read some of these, but AI superpowers, yours when it's out. Because it's fascinating, endless, and you're seeing it, man. You're on the ground floor right there. Yeah. So keep preaching. I'm going to at the show. I got a <laughs> box of popcorn. Did you see that? <laughs> what? Time to be alive. Amazing. <laughs> it is. <Yes. laughs> All right, Rich. Well, hey, Matt, uh, Matt and Joe. Yeah. That was fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting me blather away. <laughs> of course, my man.